Hey everyone, I'm Scott Stokely and this video is going to be about the importance and why you need to train with multiple of the exact same disc. Now I'm going to be demonstrating with my Tour Series Harp. These are going to drop in a couple days. Get on my mailing list at scottstokely.net and you'll be the first to hear. All right, so I'm going to start by saying at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a really good tip on how to do this affordably. Uh, if you're not paying for discs, it's obviously a lot easier to ask for a box of discs. Uh, in the real world, that doesn't work that way, but uh, there is an affordable way to do this. So stick around until the end. I talk a lot about the difference between playing, practicing, and training, and how all three of those are important to getting better. Playing is playing around at disc golf, keeping score. Uh, that could just be a practice round with friends, it could be league night, but you're replicating tournament situations, important to do. Practice is also important because that is playing around a golf independent of score, meaning you're throwing multiple shots, you're taking routes you might not normally throw, you're experimenting, you're doing do-overs, you're practicing the game, not just playing it. Uh, but training is also important and Training includes, you know, taking a stack of putters out and putting, field work, that's training, but there's a very specific type of training which I swear by and I think it's critical, and that is training with the same disc. Now, when you're training with the same disc, the idea is, is that you're going to be working on a very specific type of shot. Like when you're doing a field work with a bag of discs, you're taking your understable discs and throwing them with hyzer, or maybe you're practicing your anhyzer shots with your approach discs, but you're not working on a shot. Multiple of the same disc allows you to dial in that shot. This is what ball golfers do when they're working on a very specific shot over and over and over again. Uh, so what I wanna do, I thought about how to put this together, is I'm not gonna give you a breakdown of how to train with the same disc. Instead, I'm just gonna give you an example of what one of my training routine looks like, training routines look like for a specific shot. So the one that I'm going to be working on today is I need to dial in my harp, throwing anhyzers, but most important is I need to land this disc flat. There are certain holes where because of the disc, it might be up on a, on a mound, it might be on the backside of a hill, you might have a rough ground, but you need to land the disc flat to prevent rollaways. I mean, God forbid there's a out of bounds at the bottom of the hill. You can't just attack every basket at every angle. Sometimes you can, often you can't. A left to right shot where the disc lands flat is a specific skill you have to have. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna speak for myself. I need to dial in that shot with my harp. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is the harp is an overstable disc at slower speeds, but it's basically dead stable at faster speeds. Meaning, if I throw it fast, flat, it's gonna fly through most of its flight flat. If I throw it slower, it's gonna begin turning left early in its flight. So the speed of the disc early in the flight is going to change the flight path. So I need to work on a slow speed and a fast speed. So I'm gonna throw 200 foot shots and I'm gonna throw uh, 275 foot shots, uh, which that's actually a pretty stiff throw for a harp. Two different speeds. Now at the end of the flight, they're gonna have almost an identical fade. They're gonna run out of speed and run out of spin and they're gonna tail off to the left. I need to account for that when trying to make the disc land flat. If it's gonna be turning left at the end of its flight, then at some point I need to start it off, turn to the right. Now, how much it fades is also gonna be determined by how long it has to fade, meaning a higher throw has more time to fade, it's going to fade more, meaning the higher I throw it, if I want it to land flat, the more anhyzer I need to put on it to allow it to fly flat. Now I can't specifically tell you how to do that shot because your throw is going to have different spin, your nose angle is going to be different. But the idea is there's not one angle to make my harp land flat. It's based on distance, it's based on speed, it's based on height. So I need to work on these different shots. So I'm going to start by 
trying to land this disc low at 200 feet. Now, I apologize, you're not gonna be able to see the landing. We're in Van Horn, Texas. The only piece of grass in the entire city is this one ball field, which is too small to throw on, so I'm throwing off the ball field over a fence. Uh, so you'll just have to take my word for it, but that's not really the important part of this video anyway. All right, so 200 foot throw, need to make my harp land flat. Gonna need to start it off at a slight Anheuser angle. So it went to flat and it faded a little bit. So I know that on that 200 foot shot, I need to throw slightly more Anheuser. Turn more this way. Okay, that was actually a terrible throw. So I have to just, uh, it's an outlier. Never consider outliers as part of the equation. So I'm not even factoring that in. I'm gonna to try to do that one over. Okay, that one landed basically perfectly flat. So now I know I need about yay much angle. By the way, yay is the exact term. I don't want to say how many degrees because I know someone's going to stick a protector on the screen and uh, correct me. But it's about this much angle. Now, if I was training for real, I'm going to throw that shot over and over and over again until I can just feel where that shot is. I don't want to have to think about it. I want to feel it. Then I'm going to go to my next shot, which is going to be same distance, but because of the hole, I'm gonna have to throw that shot higher, meaning more of an Anheuser. Same distance, turned over more. Actually, that one landed perfectly flat. So I guessed correctly. Well, it's not a guess because I've been throwing the harp for a while, but if the harps were new, I'd be guessing, trying to learn the angle but that's the angle I want to throw. So now I'd be throwing that throw over and over again, and I'd be trying to imprint that throw. At this point, I mean, I don't have a basket out there. I'm not worried where the basket is or where the shot lands. I'm worried on a very specific thing. Did it land flat? That's it. Nothing else matters because I'm training. I'm working on something specific. Now, I'm going to throw shorter. I'm going to throw longer, higher, lower different winds. I'm going to learn the different ways to make my harp fly flat. What I'm doing is I'm imprinting a visual of the different flights this disc can have, right? It doesn't have every single trajectory out there. There's a very limited number of ways this disc will land flat, but I can visualize what those are based on height and distance. Now, when I step up to a hole, I look at the hole and make the determination on some holes that I need to land the disc flat. I might have a wide open hyzer shot to the hole, but the penalty is too severe. It's about score, not about if it hits next to the basket and I cry about a roll away. So if I step up to a hole where I know I need to throw an anhyzer and I know, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the harp to the shot. I know I need to throw an anhyzer. I look at that fairway. And I try to visualize the largest path through the fairway. I'll put a link below, but I made a video about how you want to throw the largest path. You want to give yourself the largest fairway possible. I look at the fairway. I have an idea of how the harp can fly. And I connect the dots and I go, the harp's the disc. I want to throw the harp through that fairway. Gives me the largest gap possible. Now I know the harp's the disc for the shot. The only other question now is what angle do I need to throw? and I don't need to think about angle. The last thing you want to do, the last thing I want to do anyway, is step up to a hole and try to figure out, let's see, how much angle should I put on this disc if I throw it about at this end? No, oh, no, that's, you do that in training. You don't do that in tournaments. When I go to a tournament, I need to know what my disc is going to do in that situation. And then when I throw the shot, I probably mess it up 30% of the time. It depends on the hole, but let's say I'll mess it up 30% of the time. That's fine because if I don't do the training, the visualization, create the muscle memory, I'm probably going to mess up the shot 35% of the time. 5% of the time difference over 72 drives and 43 approaches and uh, whatever, 88 putts, whatever, you know, whatever the number is, that little percentage improvement every single time 
creates a huge difference. That's 12 strokes at the end of the tournament simply because I went out and trained and didn't just try to execute the shot based on throwing the disc a few times. So uh, it's, I think it's critical. And there's an investment in doing this. This is, this is part of the game that costs money. But if you're trying to excel at any sport, whether it's paying a jiu-jitsu coach or uh, greens fees at the PG, you know, if you're trying to be a golfer, like there's expenses involved. So if, if it matters to you, I think you need to make this investment. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you how to do it a little bit more affordable or affordably. So you figure out the discs you wanna throw. And I'm just gonna pick an example, but let's say you like throwing the, the truth from dynamic discs right, the fantastic mid-range approach disc. You want 25 truths. Contact dynamic discs and ask them how much it would cost to buy 25 truths. Now I'll tell you right off the bat, every manufacturer is different. I don't even know if you can buy those from dynamic or not because every manufacturer has different policies for resellers, purchasing wholesale tax IDs, they're all different. Uh, so you'll need to contact the manufacturer to see if they'll even sell you those discs. But if they will, you're gonna get a price. Let's say, um, again, I'm just making up the numbers. Let's say the truth, uh, 25 of them, 12 bucks a piece, plus 25 bucks for shipping. So it's gonna cost you $13 a disc for the truth. Don't make the purchase from the manufacturer. I'm a huge believer that you need to support your local pro shop. Uh, the pro shop is, Typically, the people running those leagues that you get to play in, they're getting the new courses put in the ground. They're the ones offering classes for the kids. I know the club's involved as well, uh, but I'm a big fan of supporting that local business. But you don't want to pay full retail for training discs either. So what you do, now that you know you can buy this disc for 13 bucks a piece, go to the pro shop and let them know that's what it would cost you. Ask them if they'll sell you 25 for 13 bucks a piece. Or on their next order, can you include a purchase of 25 discs at that $13 because the pro shop is probably paying $9 because they're buying 500 discs at a time. Don't try to get them for $9. That's terrible. It doesn't cost you any more money to go directly to the pro shop. Pay what the manufacturer would have charged you. Let the pro shop make their money. Keeps them in business long enough to get another course put in that you're going to get to enjoy someday. And it doesn't cost you any more money to do so. So I, I, I I'm a believer in giving the pro shop the first dibs on getting your, your business. Then when you have those discs, you have 25 of them, don't train with 25. You take five of them, you set them aside. Well, one of them goes in your bag. You have four backups in case you lose or wear those out. Then you have 20 discs to train with. That's how you go out and train. That's how you go out and work on shots. Again, it's not cheap. Um, by the way, yes, I'll, I will also get on my list. I will be wholesaling discs to you. This wasn't a disguised pitch to buy uh, bulk discs from me, but uh, it is an option as well. I'm, I'm a business, I need to tell you that. But um, it doesn't really matter what discs you throw. Training with multiple of the same disc, I think is a critical part of the process. If you like this video, please, the best thing you can do is share it to your social media. That's how I get more viewers. And of course, subscribe and like and all that stuff that you're supposed to do. Thanks everyone.